So we're merging we're mental mentors. health and mentors stuff? Mental health and mentors. Right? Okay. I'm Felix. I'm 15 years old, and I live in Allentown. We came to this world not knowing what to expect. It's the reason why learning is just so important. Not passing the knowledge you've been given and guiding the eyes, the ears, the heart of another. And that's even more important. A mentor is that guide. A guide reassuring you that everything will be all right. Hi, I'm Matt King and I'm 15. I live in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Some people might say I struggled with a mental illness. I don't believe in mental illness. I believe that people go through struggles in which they sink or swim. I think it's important for people to have mentors that they can count on when they're going through their trials, and especially when you're a teenager. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm 14, I live in Allentown. In my life, I had seen many things struggle with mental illness. A lot of times I treat well. Sometimes they're not. I like this change. My name is Garrett. I'm 17 years old. I live in Allentown, Pennsylvania. When I was dealing with my anger problems, I went to a place called Transitions that provides mentorship and helps teens struggling with mental and behavioral problems. At Transitions, I realized how many teens there are in the Lehigh Valley that struggle with mental health issues. Outside of Transitions, the kids I met there were being judged for being different. I want to spread the message that teens with mental health issues should be treated like normal people and their different perspectives should be seen as good, not bad. After forming a team, we first discussed and how that team may health illness would treat it. The first thing we notice is that there are many different ideas about what mental health illness is. For the sake of this documentary, mental health illness is defined as mental ailments people live with every day. Our definition does not include learning disabilities. It does include everything from depression and anxiety disorders to anger management, bipolar, and schizophrenia disorders. We then hit the streets of Allentown to see how the members of the community perceive mental health illness. So what do you think of people with men mental health patients, like mental health disabilities? Um, I think they're normal. they just born with a disability, and I think that people can help them out more. I feel bad. I feel bad. Well, people that's in mental health patients uh, do deserve a break and all that with all the necessities that life could provide them, that's for sure. I, for one, uh, apply to see a psychiatrist, you know, that doesn't mean that you have to be, you know, out of your mind. Yeah. The people too? Alright. Um, uh, I got them, so I understand. You got one? Well, I got a health problem, I know that. Oh, uh, what is it? The polar, schizophrenia, anxieties, yeah, they're all people. How many, how many people do you think have mental health disability in Allentown? What do you say, 85%? I think half of Allentown has mental disabilities. Right. I'm pretty sure there are people behind closed doors that has a lot of issues, right. you know? How, how do you think the Lehigh Valley community treats mental health patients? I say good. Pretty good? Yeah. I think they just put them in a category and push them to the side. They don't really, you know, try to dig in deep and see what's the problem. Not very good. Not very good. How have you been treated? Like an outcast?
When I was four, my father died. He was an alcoholic. That was the source of a lot of my problems. But instead of sharing my feelings, I hid them mainly because of the stigma surrounding teens with mental health issues. When I was 13, my emotions finally caught up with me. I was told many times by therapists that my depression was the worst they'd ever seen. In that, I saw a challenge, to come back from the brink. Sometimes it is easier not to talk about your emotions, but that led me to su multiple suicide attempts and years of cutting. I share this information not to scare you, but more to inform you that if I would have shared my emotions and had a listening audience, my scars would not be on my wrist right now. Thanks to persistent parents, a great team of therapists, and the will to make it back, I now look back and see that if I could, would have had the chance to change something, I wouldn't have changed a thing because it wouldn't have made me the person that I am today. Thank you. I'm Joe Gallo. I'm a therapist at Lehigh Valley Hospital, the Adolescent Transition Program. I've been in transitions. Gary's been in transitions. But um, I'm wondering, in your mind, what does transitions do for people? Well, I think it, I think it does a number of things. Uh, we're, we're called a partial hospital program, and that what we do is sometimes a pers person may need therapy, if you will, but they may not need to be in the hospital 24-7, but they might need a little bit more than just seeing a counselor once a week. When we were talking about the perception of mental illness, mental health patients, um, you said stigma. What what do you think is included in that stigma? Well, I think what it is is people don't know exactly what mental illness is. I think that's a big problem. You know, in the media over the years, it's been portrayed like craziness and all that stuff. Depression is is an illness. It's, it's not craziness or anything like that. So I think there's been a, a misconception going back generations as to what mental illness really is. The media needs to portray mental illness more accurately. Wait, you mean the media sometimes misrepresents reality? Movies, I think, sometimes portray it totally different than what it actually is. I think it goes back, like I mentioned before, the education component. I, I just think you know, fear grows out of not knowing something. I mean, it, uh, we're afraid of the unknown. So the more that we can educate people about mental illness, all of a sudden it becomes a lot less frightening. And uh, I don't think that's only in Lehigh Valley. I think it's, it's everywhere. Do you think that it's important for teens to have mentors? Like, even if they don't go to transitions, just someone who doesn't have any emotional problems, living in daily life, should they have a mentor? I think it's helpful. I think it's very positive. If, if you need it, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's important. Okay. Yeah, it's right. important. Thank you. It, yeah, it's very important. Important? Yes. Right. Of course. Of course. Everybody needs that. You know, that's without yeah. a doubt in a person's mind. We all need some mentor, whether it's family, brothers, yeah. friends. You know, that's without question. Yeah. Okay. I'm Jake Ramsey. I'm a. Uh, teacher here at Hype. I get to work with teens, teaching them how to make documentary films and be community leaders. I'm Jenna Azar. I'm the co-director of Hype, which stands for a Healthy Youth Peer Education at Muhlenberg College. Being a mentor is a wonderful thing for me. It helps me be a more open-minded person. It helps me keep my own problems in perspective. It helps me learn from my own mistakes and be the person that I want to be as a role model. You know, often as adults, we think that we're the ones who have a lot to teach and we, you guys have a lot to learn. And um, doing this work every day, I realize that, you know, I have just as much to learn and I have just as much to gain yeah from being a mentor as the young person does that I'm working with. I'd say specific advice, find, a, find, do your research, find a good program that is going to allow for you to have uh, impacts. There's programs out there that aren't as good as other programs, so do your research, make sure that it's something that 
you have the time for that you can commit to and then go for it. They need to be committed and they need to be ready to, uh, you know, to have a stable, continuous relationship with uh, the young person. I think a lot of times kids with mental health illness are seen as different and seen as they need special, special help, but a mentor can be someone for those kids and those teens who's more of just, more of a friend and a guide than someone who's trying to fix them. For young people, specifically young people with mental health issues, it becomes even more important that those relationships are continuous and long lasting. And some people think that, you know, they can be a mentor for uh, a short period of time yeah, and they need to really understand how, what a commitment that is and how seriously they need to take it. This time I've had in Hype was the first time in my life that I've heard people, stories of people with mental illness or have gone in deeper into the whole situation. I myself am, uh, apart from my whole group, I have focused in more on mentorship, being there for somebody, and just actually staying there too. We all need mentors in one time or another, or maybe for your whole life, or just for a day, just for a week, doesn't matter, you just need them. Somebody that can understand you, and that won't push you away. If you ask me who was my mentor, and who still is to this day, that find a question would be my big brother. Family's tough. Everybody's family has problems, and throughout all the bad situations, he's been there. He's reassured me everything is going to be okay. He's been exactly in my shoes. And I know for a fact that I am not the only teen in this city of Allentown, in this Lehigh Valley, in this state, in this world that needs a mentor. something that should be addressed more because it is one of the most vital things that people need in their life. Which is why I myself have mentored many of my friends, younger than me and older than me. They always come to me for advice, for someone to listen to. So, I will always believe that mentors are important for somebody, for a group of people. And to be mentored is even better. Thank you.